Hi everyone. In this video, I would like to uh, quickly review some of the basic concepts when it comes to functions. So we're going to start off first with definitions. So in your notebook, please put the subtitle definitions. All right, there's only a few that I really need you to know. The first one is called a relation. A relation is existing if there is a link between two variables. This is in many ways similar to in real life a relationship between boyfriend and girlfriend. A relation exists if a boy likes a girl and vice versa. Next definition we have is for the word variables. As you may have learned in the past, the word variable means quantities that can take on different values. And of course from science class you know that there are two types, independent and dependent. In the case of math, many variables are represented by letters such as X, Y, and Z. Now let's define exactly what is meant by the independent variable. As in science class, the word independent variable means it is the variable that causes something else to change and that is always located on the x-axis on a Cartesian plane. For example, as you grow older, it causes you to get taller. So your age is the independent variable because it causes your height to change. And finally, let us define what is meant by the dependent variable. As usual from science class, you may have learned that the dependent variable is the variable that is being affected by a certain change. And the dependent variable is always located on the y-axis of the Cartesian plane. So that's basically all the vocabulary that you really need to know for now. The next thing I'd like to take a look at is how are relations shown or displayed, such as when you're reading through a math textbook or a science textbook. So for the next subtitle, I would like you to put representing relations. How do we display them? There are three main ways that you may find in many textbooks. One of the first ways is through what we call a mapping diagram. What is a mapping diagram? Well, it looks something like this. It's a kind of diagram where you have two bubbles. Some teachers may call it a bubble diagram. And the left bubble is where we find the independent variable. So let's say as an example, I put the names Mason, Jill, and Steph and I connect them to the cars that they drive. So let's say for example Mason drives a Mazda so he'll have an arrow connected to Mazda. Let's say Jill drives a Honda and lucky for Jill she also drives a Toyota. Poor Stephanie doesn't drive any of the cars. And very important, so I'd like to put it in an important color. Like, uh, like I mentioned before, the left bubble is the independent variable, and that tends to also be called the source set. That's the independent. And the bubble on the right is usually called the target set. also the dependent variable. All right, so that's what we call a mapping diagram. The second way that you might find in many textbooks, very commonly used is a Cartesian plane or a graph. Now you should already know what graph look like. Graphs are formed from two axes. The flat axis is the x-axis, and the tall one is known as the y-axis. So, 
it could look something like this. Here's a relation that shows the ownership of the cars again. You'll notice that on the x-axis I have the independent variables, Mason, Jill, and Steph, and on the y-axis I have the dependent variables, the cars that they drive, Toyota, Honda, and Mazda. And again, let's represent the relationships. Mason drives a Mazda, so I put a coordinate for him. Jill drives a Honda, so I put a coordinate for her. And she also drives a Toyota, put a coordinate for her. And poor Steph still doesn't drive any of the cars. And finally, the last way that relationships are shown is through ordered pairs. How does that look like? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. When we put squiggly brackets, they indicate the start of a set. And inside the squiggly bracket, we have our coordinates. Mason drives a Mazda. The next coordinate, Jill drives a Honda. And the last coordinate, Jill also drives a Toyota. And since Stephanie does not have any cars, she's not even shown. And close the squiggly bracket. This is what's known as ordered pairs. So those are the three methods that relations are shown. And you'll find very quickly that in our course, we tend to show most of our relationships using graphs. And finally, to finish our review of functions, I would like to look at what makes a function a function and not simply just a run-of-the-mill relationship. So please put our final subtitle for a review difference between relations and functions. There's actually a huge and very critical difference. As you may have learned in the past, a function is an extremely special type of relation where each element of the source set is attached to at most one element of the target set. That means that an independent variable can have one connection to a dependent variable. It can have no connection, but it cannot have two or more. The moment an independent variable has two or more connections, it makes it not a function. So it's a very, very important difference. Let's take a look at some examples. Like you put EX. Let's take a look at a bubble diagram. So suppose I give you two bubbles. In the source set, there's A, B, and C. And in the target set, there's 1, 2, and 3. Let's attach the A to the 1. Let's attach the C to the 2. And let's also attach the C to the 3. Here's an example of something that is not a function. Why? Well, because the C, which is an independent variable, has two connections. It is connected to the 2 and to the 3. Let's put that justification down. This is not a function since C has two images. Let's take a look at another example. Let's try looking at some ordered pairs. So suppose I give you the following ordered pairs. A is connected to 1. B is connected to 1. C is connected to 2. And C is also connected to 1. Here's another example of a relation that is not a function. Why? Well, if you look at the element C, it's got two connections. It is connected to 2, and it's connected to 1. 
So let's put that down. This is not a function. Justification since C again has two images. All right. And how about one last one using a graph? Put example. And here's a very, very quick graph. Suppose I give you a nice simple graph like the following. In the x-axis, I have A, B, C, and D. And on the y-axis, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's say that A is connected to 1, the B is connected to 1, the C is connected to 2, and the C is also connected to 4. Here's another example of a relation that is not a function. And again, the reason is simple, because C has two connections. The C is connected to 2 and the 4. So let's put that down. This is not a function. Since C has two images. So, remember, a relation can only be considered a function if an independent variable has one or zero connections, never more than one. Now, let's finish off the tail end of our review of functions by looking at a very special type of notation. Final subtitle for today is the function notation and you may have seen it already being used in class something that looks like f x. So what does f x mean? Well in many textbooks you'll read a paragraph and it says something like the following. Suppose I give you a function f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. And in many textbooks you may also find this, where x is an element of the natural numbers and y is an element of natural numbers. Now, what does fx really mean? Well, it's really simple, actually. And many textbooks actually word it like this. fx, all that really means is, put your quotations, y is a function of x. Well, that's still very technical. So, let's see if we can even simplify that into even plain English. What this means is that y depends on x. And that's all really the fx notation means. It means that y depends on x, therefore, if we knew what x was, then we can calculate y. So knowing that our example f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, if I told you that x was 5, how does that change the value of y? Well, easy. You would do this. x is 5. It would change the y value by making it become 2 multiplied by 5 plus 3, which gives 13. And that is the very common fx notation. And that concludes our review of some very basics on functions.